The next configuration we're going to look at is a difference amplifier. And so looking at the circuit here, we notice this is a little different from the configurations we've considered thus far because neither the inverting or the non-inverting terminals are connected directly to ground. So we're not going to be able to use that virtual ground trick that we did in previous configurations. So before we get into analysis, let's, let's talk about a little bit what this amplifier is meant to do. And so as the name implies, what this is going to do is amplify the difference between the two inputs, but it's also going to be blocking or rejecting any, any uh, signals that are common to the two inputs. So amplifies difference of V1 and V2 while blocking and I'll put in brackets here ideally any signals common to V1 and V2 and so we'll see what that means a little more clearly in a later video and we're also going to see how we can quantify essentially how ideal our difference amplifier is. Okay, so our goal, like always, is going to be to get a general expression so that we don't have to rederive this from our ideal op amp properties each time. So as a start though, let's go ahead and label on here what we know from our ideal op amps. We know that we have zero current coming into our op amp inputs. So we have zero here, zero here. And to make things a little easier, I'm gonna label a couple voltages. I'm gonna label the voltage at this point as VA and the voltage at this point down here, VB. So now for an ideal op amp, which we're assuming this is, so, and in this class in general, we're gonna assume ideal op amps unless told otherwise. Uh, for an ideal op amp though, we know in this case, VA is equal to VB. And again, I'm just adding notation to make my life a little easier instead of trying to keep track of that in my head. Okay, so we're gonna start our analysis by doing our, our KCL at node A there, as well as a KCL at node B, and then we're gonna use this relationship of VA equals VB to, to sort of work our way towards um, a general expression. Okay, so first let's start by doing our KCL at node A. So KCL, at A. Let me say node A so it's not confusing as you're reading it. And so node A is just this point that I've labeled with a voltage VA. And so sort of using the same ideas in terms of what we saw when we were doing our node voltage method, we could talk about our currents as going here. And we could define these currents going anyway, but to be consistent with how I have these, this equation in the notes, I have currents labeled going in these directions like such. And so if we look at the current going through R1, we would say, well, that's equal to the current is the voltage at our node of interest, which in this case would be where V1 is, minus our adjacent voltage, which is VA, divided by the resistor connecting them, which is R1. Similar thing, so that's our current in, our current out is, of course we have that zero, so the only current out is going through R2. And so that current is going to be equal to our node of interest VA minus our adjacent, which at the adjacent node it's V naught, and we divide that by R2. So with some algebra, we can rearrange this to solve for V naught. So we do that by multiplying both sides by R2, and then subtracting VA, and then multiplying by negative one. So we do all of that and we get V naught or V out equals the quantity one plus R2 over R1 times VA minus R1 divided by, sorry, R2, R2 divided by R1 times V1. And so again, to be consistent with the notes, let's label this as equation one. Okay, so now let's do a similar thing at node B. So KCL at node B. And so again, I don't need to do this, but I can explicitly draw on some currents uh, if I wanted that to help. We don't have to draw them in this direction. Again, I'm just drawing it in that direction to be consistent with the equations in the notes. 
If you want, you could go back through and change one or both directions, and ultimately you would end up with the same result. So using those same ideas of node of interest minus adjacent divided by resistor, I can get my equations for these two currents. So I'm gonna have V2 minus VB divided by R3, it's a current into the node, and then the current out is simply going to be VB divided by R4. So we get that. And so this we can again solve, uh, we can use some algebra. In this case, we're gonna to wanna to solve for our uh, VB. So solving for VB, we find that VB is equal to R4 over R3 plus R4 times V2. Um, and at any point, if you have any questions about what these algebra steps are in between, uh, please feel free to let me know and I'll be happy to go through them. Uh, I just try to do my best not to go into excruciating detail um, that nobody wants to see during the notes. But I'm always happy to do that if anybody wants to see. Okay, so looking at equations one and two, how can we use this? Well, if we come back up here to what we wrote in blue, we said for an ideal op amp, VA equals VB. So what that means is we can substitute our expression for VB into equation one. So let's say we're going to substitute equation two into equation one. And so where we're gonna substitute that, well, we're gonna take this VB we're gonna put it in for VA because we said those two are equal. Okay, so doing that, we get our output voltage, V out, is one plus R2 over R1. And now our VB expression comes in, which is R4 divided by R3 plus R4 times V2 minus R2 divided by R1 times V1. So we see we're getting on the right track because we have some difference here. Uh, v out is something times V2 minus something times V1, which is where we wanted to go because remember, ultimately we're trying to amplify the difference between these two inputs. So let's rearrange this to make it a little clearer. So if we rearrange this again, we're gonna do some algebra that I'm not gonna show explicitly. Uh, if you have questions, of course, let me know. Um, but we're going to have this big messy fraction here and we're going to see why in a little bit. Um, we're going to have R2 times in the numerator 1 plus R1 over R2 and in the denominator we're going to have R1 times 1 plus R3 over R4 and all of that is going to be multiplied by V2 and then we just still have this minus R2 over R1 times V1. Okay, so why in the world would I want to rearrange it to look like that? Um, well, let's take a look. So, and sorry, I'm missing an equal sign here for our V out equals. So we know that since this is a difference amplifier, by definition, we said that ideally it's going to be blocking any signals common to V1 and V2. So what that means is if V1, and equals, if V1 equals V2, then nothing should be getting through. Nothing should be amplified because all of the signals are common. So that would mean that V out equals zero. So that means for our ideal difference amplifier, we have V out equals zero when V1 equals V2. And so we can plug that into this equation above here. So we can say, well, we have zero uh, for V out and we have V1 and V2. And so what would happen is we have zero equals R2 times one plus R1 over R2. And then in the denominator, R1 times one plus R3 over R4 all of that, and let's say we just put in V1 because V1 equals V2, and then minus R2 over R1 times V1. 
So of course what we can do is we can move one of these to the other side of the equation. So, so I don't have to rewrite that. I'm just gonna get rid of this and we can say this is equal to now. And then of course the V1s cancel out so we can get rid of our V1s and we're left with this. And so of course we can see for this to be true, what we have to have happen is R1 over R2 equal R3 over R4. And so we can find that um, just by looking at these fractions here. So that's why we rearrange this equation in that sort of weird form, because now we can see we have right here R2 over R1, R2 over R1. So we want all of this here to be equal to one. And that only happens when R1 over R2 is equal to R3 over R4. Okay, so with that information, what we can do is we can then redraw our circuit and we can replace our R3 with R1 and we can replace our R4 with R2. So let me just come up here and copy this real quick. Okay. Save me some time redrawing, hopefully. We'll put that right there. And so now what we're saying we can do is we can replace our R3 with an R1. No, oh, don't want to do that with R1. And we can replace our R4 with an R2. And that's going to simplify our, our circuit. So if we have that in there and we're talking about this ideal case, we can come back and we can then simplify this equation here. And that's going to reduce to just R2 times R2 divided by R1 times the difference between V2 and V1. So essentially, these two terms are going to cancel each other out. So to write that explicitly, we have that our output voltage is equal to R2 over R1 times the quantity of V2 minus V1. So that would be the relationship between our input and output. As advertised, it is um, amplifying the difference of those two input signals. And notice again in this updated circuit, we only have resistors R1 and R2. And we're gonna come back in a later video and see what happens if those aren't exactly equal to one another. Um, one other thing to mention is of course, like we've done for some previous circuits, we could, instead of defining explicitly V out equals something times V in, we could define our closed loop differential gain as being just R2 over R1. So like we've seen with other amplifier configurations, this gain factor is only dependent on external resistors.